Hello everybody and welcome back to Crusader Kings, where I've been thinking about it. Our holdings here are reasonably upgraded for our tech level. They're not maxed out, and we need like, what? I think I said somewhere around 2,500 gold or so to max them out for our current tech level. Our current tech level isn't going to be changing for a little while because we're working on heraldry first. So, I was thinking about it. As long as we don't have high partition as our succession law, I think our most troop efficient way to do this is, in fact, to be working on our men at arms regiments. And I said that we would be working on that, and we have been. But I, I think it's even more efficient than I was than I was thinking. Um, what is this guy wanting us to do? Oh, he wants to go on He wants to convert. He would get a weak hook on us. Hmm. I won't bargain for his soul. This guy wants one too? Okay. Get out of here. I don't want people to have hooks on us. Oh, right, because we were requesting that they convert. This must be a change that they made then. It's a hook instead of gold. Interesting. That must be in the new patch. It makes sense, having it be a hook. I'm, I'm okay with that. I, th I think that's a solid change, actually. Sounds good. So we're 91 gold right now, and the question is, what do we want to max out? What indeed? Do we want to change any of these regiments over? We can't actually see what men at arms regiments we have, do we? Oh yeah, we can. We're just at the limit right now, so we can't make additional ones. And we can't actually see, because we're at the limit, what they do. But we can see what's available. And given these options... I think it's fine to keep this as is for right now. Although I think... Perhaps later on, we may want to keep it like three units of heavy infantry and then three units of heavy cavalry, depending on what the counters end up looking like. At least that's how I would organize it in CK2. We'll see if that ends up looking the same. We can imprison a few criminals, and we may want to. Not that one. We can imprison this guy, though. Absolutely. Not that one, though. Okay, how much can we ransom him for? 30 gold. Fine. So I think let's go ahead and max out our armored footmen first. I think that's probably what we should work on here. And these size increases... Okay, that's... Right. Gotcha. So the size increase is the same no matter what regiment you're doing it in. I think, technically, it might be slightly more gold efficient to increase one at a time so that we don't pay the reinforcing maintenance on all of them at the same time. Yeah, I... Th well, actually, that reinforcement maintenance did increase. Or no, that's the full maintenance, not the unraised maintenance. Gotcha. Okay. I think I've wrapped my brain around what that number is telling us. That's that's a good thing. So yeah, this is going to be quite a lot. That's going to be, let's see here, 7 times 8. I can never do that math in my head. For whatever reason, I have a hard time with the 7s in my head. Uh, let's see here, 7 times 8 is... I'm going to pull up a calculator because I'm terrible at this. 7 times 8 is 56. That's what I was thinking, but I wasn't confident in that answer. Okay, so that would be 5,600 troops. Not counting the fact that onagers are only 25 per. So that's noted. We're going to want to replace our onagers as soon as we can. And let's see here. Urbanization is what is being exposed. And that's a good thing. That's a very, very good thing for us. Yeah, I'm okay with that. 
Well, let's get these men at arms continually increased in size. I do wish there was a way to raise only our men at arms and not raise any levy troops. That would be something that would be great. That's the thing that, of course, happens in CK2 because the men at arms are over there retinue troops that are always raised. A la Europa. So, that would be a particularly good thing. Accusations of witchcraft, huh? 300 stewardship lifestyle experience. Release her. What could possibly go wrong? We are going to grab, I think, Chains of Loyalty. We are on domestic affairs for our Chancellor. Okay. Our Chancellor is incompetent. That's good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, things are definitely looking up for us at this point. You can also see there's a fair amount of construction going on in our vassal holdings here. Those are good things. That's all very, very good things. We're being raided. I don't care, as long as it's not in our capital duchy. That's the important thing. Our vassals can defend themselves, in theory. They're also probably pushing our borders somewhere. Yeah, you can see, we are definitely making some expansions in some regions. We've largely been chilling for the past while, since we converted to feudalism, pretty much. But honestly, given our current size, that's to be expected. Our development is going to go up in our capital pretty soon. So that is absolutely phenomenal. We're going to be going up to 23 out of 35. And honestly, we're probably not going to make it to 35 before urbanization is done, and that will increase the cap to 55 development. So we're probably going to be working on increasing our development here for quite some time. We are getting an existing development malice. Yeah, it suffers from diminishing returns. By default, counties reach the maximum exi existing development penalty at 10 development. Each era has an innovation which increases it, going all the way up to 90 in the late medieval era. Okay, so we're just getting a small malice here because we're approaching 35, I guess. Because I'm pretty sure 35 is our current cap, right? That is under... Communal government, yeah. You reach the maximum at 35 development. It doesn't begin at 35 development. Here we re would reach the maximum at 55 development. Sounds good. We can demand payment from this guy. I'll take his 20 gold. Thank you very much, dude. Excellent. Let's max out this unit of armored footmen. Wonderful. They're going to take a while to get to max there, and we are currently paying 12.4. Now that is increased because they're reinforcing. So that's okay. I do want to max out these other armored footman units. They are, of course, heavy infantry. Okay, Gurkhas had a daughter. That's nice. The question is... At what point do we convert back from working on men-at-arms to working on buildings in our capital duchy? I feel like it's when we get it maxed out. I really, really do. Yeah, you can see here we're back up to 800, and that cut our monthly maintenance from our unraised men-at-arms by a fair amount. Now, this is still going to cost us a fair amount monthly, raised or unraised. Raised, it's going to cost us a ton. If we have all of our levies raised as well. So that's a thing. I would prefer to rely on just our men-at-arms, though, if we can. Like... I would love it if there was a way to simply raise men-at-arms. Like, if we were to go to the rally point... And say that we had the rally point here. And we raised... Like, there's an option to raise the local army. But there's also an option to raise all here. 
But I wish there was an option to only raise your men-at-arms and your champions, and leave the levies at home. That would be super nice. Because those would be very powerful troops, while at the same time not being quite as numerous. But we'd be able to use them and not pay for all those levy troops in situations where we were fighting relatively smaller enemies. And then we could only raise the levy troops when we're fighting big enemies. And that's how it works in Crusader Kings 2, anyway. And I would prefer it if it worked that way in this game as well. Unfortunately, it does not. But that, that would be my preference, is to be able to have that option. Okay, I just want to go through and check that all of our gold generation is maxed out for our technology level, and I believe that it is. Yep, that's all good. Okay, all of our personally held gold generation is maxed out. Good to know. We are generating 31.6 per month right now. I mean, we're only paying 7 per month for our unraised men-at-arms, which isn't too bad considering that we've bulked this up pretty dramatically. Let's go ahead and bump this up to size 5. And I mean, now you can see that we're paying 11.7, but that's because we're reinforcing. Excellent. I'm wondering if we want to even increase the size of these, since I'm thinking about replacing them. They do counter skirmishers. Actually, let's check in here. Plus four size and plus one max number. Okay. You can recruit crossbowmen as men-at-arms and trebuchets. I feel like... We only need the one unit of siege weapons. At least for now. This would get us up to 8 men-at-arms regiments available, and this would get us up to 9 in total. But very large men-at-arms regiments. Okay. There's a scheme at court. Oh no. That's just a bonus to heavy infantry. Okay. I'm getting an idea on how I want to structure our levies. We can get crossbowmen, men-at-arms, and we can get, of course, once we get arched saddle, we can get armored horsemen. So that would be heavy cavalry. So we would have a unit of onagers, or well, a unit of siege weapons. It wouldn't be onagers, theoretically, forever anyway. So we'd have a unit of siege weapons, and then we would have a total of nine men-at-arms regiments. So we would have eight to split between three unit types. I'm thinking two, unit, two units of crossbowmen, three units of armored footmen, and three units of heavy cavalry. Although I might be convinced to do three units of crossbowmen and two units of heavy cavalry. And the more I think about it, the more I like that concept... Let's take a quick look at what their stats would be. I have to get this to lock in. There we go. Okay, 72, 22, zero, 5. Compared to Armored Horseman, 135, 20, and 0. Plains and Drylands. There's not that many of those around here. Okay. Yeah, I think that we should have two units of cavalry and three of crossbowmen. We can gain 120 gold. We can gain 475 gold and 24 dread, but we will lose 50 control. Or we can reinvest in it for 10% development growth in Natanjia. Now, Natanjia is... What, this one? No, that's Barsha. That's Natanjia. Our control there is maxed. The development there is pretty low, but it's going to be getting a lot of neighbor growth. I think we're just going to take the cash. Excellent. And we are, of course, going to invest that in finishing up our armored footmen. I think there's absolutely no point 
whatsoever. Oh, we need a uh, spy master. Yeah, you can go there. I think there's absolutely no point whatsoever in increasing the size of these pikemen, these skirmishers, or our onagers. I think we're just going to max out our armored footmen for now and then move on until we have access to armored horsemen and until we have access to crossbowmen. And that might even be the order that we're going to go in. Maybe. I'll have to think about that. We can lawfully imprison this countess, and so we shall. That's excellent. That'll get us some money. Not a ton, but a little bit. We'll get that sweet, sweet 50 gold. We can lawfully imprison that guy, but it's only a 50-50, and I don't want to spark a rebellion. Okay, let's go ahead and finish up maxing out our armored footmen, I think. I think I've got a reasonable plan on how to lay out our men-at-arms at this stage. Interesting that they have a scroll bar in this, though, when the men-at-arms caps out at 9, which would fit in here perfectly. I wonder if they're planning to have something else in there, or if they're planning to have more men-at-arms later on. Or perhaps there can be more men-at-arms for some culture groups. That's a possibility, I suppose. Like, if we check down over here... Yeah, that's not a thing. Condottieri, perhaps so? Yeah, that would be mi mi missionary? Mercenary higher cost. Not missionary. Okay. I don't see anything there, but... Uh, yeah, it would be... Probable, I would think, that there would be some way to exceed that cap that I don't know about. We'll take that up to six of eight. We are almost done outfitting our armored footmen. We can see here that we now have up over 31,000 troops available to us. There's no surprise that the AI is uh, not trying to pick a fight with us right now. We should probably start thinking about picking a fight with the AI. But I'm not going to do it just yet. We could get a weak hook on this guy, this Serene Doge. He is uh, slightly naked. Good thing I have nudity off. But he, uh, what? He's the Serene Doge of Venice. We'd get a hook on the King of Novgorod. If it's true. Let's do it. Okay. I'm also wondering... Yeah, he's whole of body. I think that would be why. <laughs> he's also chased, which is kind of ironic. We could, be, we could be benevolent. That would get us plus five direct vassal opinion, and realm laws would be 10% cheaper. I don't really care about that. I think we get the hook on this guy. And then, question is, what do we do with it? We could demand payment. That would only be 50 gold. We could modify his feudal contract. Make his taxes be extortionate. That would only be worth 0.6 taxes. I don't think that's worthwhile. His levy contribution would be even less worthwhile. Maybe we should just take the cash. Just give me 50 gold. We'll call it a day. I really don't think it was worthwhile. The, on the ongoing opinion malice was just too high. So we'll bump that up to 600 on the armored footman. Excellent. Okay. Our rival died. We'll take that. And we're almost done with our armored footman. Let's get this maxed out as soon as this month tick happens. Which will be in just a little bit. And there we go. So our armored footmen are maxed out. I think it's a waste of gold to max out the onagers, pikemen, or the skirmishers. So we're just going to chill on those for right now. We can do some prisoner imprisonment. Or rather, some criminal imprisonment. 
We'll do that one for sure. We have a stewardship perk available. Okay, and we will also imprison that person and ransom back for 50 gold. And ransom back for 50 gold. Let's grab this perk. I think we'll just grab likable, probably. I mean, we want all of these eventually. And I don't think we have much for tyranny, so I think likable is the better tree to go down for now. Excellent. Now those castles are maxed out. This one is only needing 412 gold to max out. That one's a little bit more. And so is that one. But a lot of these are getting pretty close. Hmm. Abandon this foolish endeavor immediately. We do not require additional children. We have a lot of those. A whole lot of those. Perhaps too many of those. <laughs> Perhaps indeed. How are we doing on heraldry? Wait, what? Did I switch to Arched Saddle? I did not intend to do that. I think I accidentally did. Yeah, I remember accidentally doing that. I am a moron. Okay. I mean, we do want Arched Saddle, but not yet. Heraldry is way more important. We're 16 years away from that. We can't really waste time. I mean, we're going to be 60 by the time that ticks in. We may have to deal with one more se secession. That said, buffing up our men-at-arms should dramatically help. With the factionalism when that happens. It'd be even better if we had the correct men-at-arms regiments, but we do not. They're not currently available. The real interesting thing is, when we upgrade to mangonels, or even to trebuchets, will this automatically update, or will we have to disband it and create it again? That'll be interesting to find out. We can build an upgrade over here, and I think we'll get started on that. We're very, very close at this point to getting our capital duchy where I want it to be. Okay, our son came of age. That's nice. And he can marry. And so he shall. Excellent. We can imprison that, that guy. We only have a 51% chance. I'm not okay with that. And I don't care about our other children's education traits. The only one I care about is our player heir, who of course is Midas Touched. He's actually going to be really, really good. I wouldn't mind if we were able to just grant all of these titles to him and then abdicate. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Unfortunately, we're not sufficiently depressed to commit suicide. That is something we could do, is specifically build up our stress level. Nope, I'm not going to try to imprison that guy. That ain't going to happen. Yeah, that, that's certainly an interesting option. The real question is, can we get to heraldry in time? If we can, we can potentially pass high partition relatively easily. Okay, these guys would oppose it currently, but we might be able to convince them. Positive opinion, that's it. Fascinating. We could do this. This could definitely happen. Let's hop over to the council here. And the marshal. Okay, are you a decent marshal? Skill 14? Eh. Skill 13? Eh. <laughs> are either of you a good court chaplain? Skill 18, that would be an improvement. And skill 6. Okay, let's... Go ahead and put the Queen of Bohemia in as our counselor, or rather as our court chaplain. She'll be better at that, and that will make her happier. And yeah, feudal, feudal tax is increasing. That'll be good as well. So that gets her a lot closer to wanting to be in here. Or to approve this, rather. And we could pay them off at this point. The only one that we might not be able to is King Carlo. But we could just slot him into this martial slot, even though he's not great at it, just for the opinion to push through high partition. 
that's assuming we have the technology by the time that this guy is still alive, right? By the time we have the technology, that's assuming that this guy's still alive. Uh, let's see here. We could put the King of Bavaria in as this Chancellor, and he would be terrible at it. We could move the Queen of Hungary over here, though. But then who would we have as our Spy Master? These guys are both pretty bad at that. Okay. They're quite bad at it. I think we'll just put the King of Bavaria in as the Chancellor, even though he's just absolutely terrible at it. Skill 5, skill 8, yeah. It's unfortunate, but we'll do that. And there's 100 gold for us. Wonderful. That does, of course, mean that we can build over here. Oh, hello. Wait, war against tyranny? Did I do a tyranny? I don't believe I did. Okay, so... We need a new marshal. Our marshal died, actually. Okay. We'll put the King of White Roos in there. He's not great, but he'll do. Like, this guy is not really a threat. Let's go ahead and upgrade our barracks here. And this is really more of a thing for next episode. Oh, hello. He's right here. Literally right here. Okay. He's, uh, he's not going to like that. We already have sufficient troops to deal with him. So I'm going to stop gathering here and here and here. Okay. Well, we'll deal with this next episode. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I'll see you all next time when I'll continue to be confused about why this guy thinks I'm tyrannical. <laughs> okay.